All right, you're, you're not gonna like this. This is one of the last videos I am gonna make while here in Bangalore, India. I finally got the confirmation I'll be flying out July 24th. And so I started thinking, what do I have to do before leaving? And it includes interviewing the family here, Jaya, Suniha, Shreyas, Satish, and it got me thinking about, this is how I get to travel the world. It's interviewing strangers by myself with Annalisa, my travel partner, when she's here. And it's allowed me to work with some of the top brands in the outdoor industry in the world, like Pearl Izumi and Revo Sunglasses and New World CBD. And so today I just wanted to teach you guys how you can interview strangers and tell their stories while you travel the world and give you an excuse and get paid to do that. Let's dive in. It's gonna be like one of the last times I get a show Cuddy just totally passed out here. But to give you guys a sense of what these interviews can look like. And with adventure filmmaking, you're not on a set, you don't have a full crew with you, you don't have all your stuff with you. You have to really be flexible and nimble. And so I just wanna share two to three examples of what that can look like and, and break down those tips and you'll be surprised that most of them aren't technical tips. It's a lot more social work than anything. And then I'll share a story of how this really can impact and change the course of someone else's life. Alright, tip number one is to not call it an interview at all. That intimidates a lot of people. And in a lot of these situations, you're not interviewing a professional. You're just interviewing someone you meet or bumped into and want to share their story. And so call it that, either sharing their story or having a conversation. A lot of times in terms of where the camera's actually positioned is I'll put them in a chair and put myself in a chair right next to the camera and just tell them to talk to me. Act like it's a conversation, tell them to introduce their name, where they are, what's going on, and just have that dialogue. That will make them feel a lot more comfortable rather than saying, this is an interview, because that makes people feel nervous. And your job is to make them feel calm. There's a Sanskrit saying, you know, uh, Atiti Devo Bhavo. That means uh, a guest is like God. Tip number two is the fake off. This is after you have your full interview. You're like, oof, we're done. What you do is go up to your camera, hit the off button, and then immediately turn it back on to start a new recording session. But don't tell them that. You'll hear Scott mention this when I was out in Death Valley. I was. I, I already recorded you saying all that stuff. It's the secret to good filmmaking. You record before <laughs> you, you know, think, the... Yeah. <laughs> But I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm picking up. No one tips realizes, and then he puts in the, the bloopers. Sir. Yeah, yeah. We won't make any bloopers. <laughs> Never. Now, what this does is just make people act like their normal selves. What will happen time and time again is that people will be kind of putting on this facade, trying to answer these questions, think about things, be really stressed, and and you might get some good content there. But I swear, once you are done, or when they think they are done with the interview and you just relax and go, oh gosh, that feels so much better. <sighs> and then they'll be like, you know, I was thinking about that first question and you know what I didn't say and then they say it and, and that is what you include. It's, that's like an insider tip right there. <laughs> Mr. Dennis, you want to give a quick introduction to yourself? Uh, I'm Dennis Patterson and I'm an adventure cycling tour leader out having fun getting ready for a trip I'm taking in in later in May this year. And how'd you meet Annalisa and I? I met you guys on the 2017 Trans Am. We met in Virginia and re-met across the country as we crossed paths all the way into I think last time I saw you guys was in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Dennis. It's like always a race with thunderstorms in the background to get these videos actually filmed. But if you're looking for your basic setup, and a lot of times people say, Eric, I don't have the camera equipment. 
And of course this is a place of privilege, but I film on a $500 camera, which in terms of the professionals I'm talking about is so under budget, which is crazy. But a lot of times when I'm filming, like Jaya here who's about to drop off tea, when I'm filming her, a lot of times I'll set up my smartphone as the main angle or the side angle. And so you can just pick up a simple Joby tripod, this little mounting clip so your phone fits in there, and then a lavalier mic. And so this is kind of like the basic $20 or $30 setup to get anyone going. And what typically happens when Annalise and I are filming for the Miles of Portrait series is that my Nikon is the main camera angle, this is the side. And as a reminder, especially if you're new on this channel, absolutely everything I carry for production fits on my bike or backpack. So that means this tripod is a travel tripod, so it folds up and then this is super small. This is in my bike handlebar bag, so it's a really, really compact setup that you can bring absolutely everywhere. But besides getting a tripod, right? All right, so then in like, what was it six days? Six days, I'm packing up my backpack and my matador bag to go back to America. And beyond getting a tripod, the other thing to actually keep your camera always around is this Peak Design Clip. You will see like everyone use this, and so when you're actually biking or hiking or traveling around, if you believe that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, then having your camera always right there next to you makes it so you can just pop it off your bag, get a shot, film Jaya, and keep going. And so that's how I get a lot of shots on the side of the mountains or the side of the roads when I'm biking is that I have the Nikon actually clipped to my bag. And then also my tripod is usually right here on the side on this awesome Fort Lee waterproof bag. All right, tea time now. Tea time now. A break with our sponsors. Diet Badass is the streaming platform to learn directly from the badass diabetics you know and follow. Now offering live yoga, HIT, meditation, and more. Use code ERIC to get the first month free. All right, tea time with Jaya is over. I also straightened my glasses, I apologize about that. But a few technical things. One is using the rule of thirds. So that means shifting over your subject so they're often on the third of the actual camera. And I'll leave a link below about that. And then also Peter McKinnon has an incredible video about linking multi-cam clips together. So that's how you link your main camera with your side angle. Um, and that's also really helpful for audio. So a lot of times pulling audio from a mic rather than the main camera. But what I want to sit down and share with you is from the Miles of Portraits Southwest trip, which I'm going to begin editing before the India trip. Sorry about that. Is the story of Gene Medley. Now, I met Gene when we were both doing an American Diabetes Association ride and bumped into each other. And that's an instance where I had my camera on a tripod and was able to capture her story right then and there. All right, why are you riding today? I ride because I am a type 2 diabetic and my family are diabetics and I have friends who are diabetics. Four years ago, I weighed 325 pounds. Today, I have lost 163 of those pounds. I was two types of insulin diabetic, Humalog and the other one. <laughs> I no longer take any medication for diabetes. It's controlled through exercise, and the ADA has been amazing in supporting me. Is that not absolutely incredible? I love every bit of that story. That's incredible. But then I ended up staying in her house for a week and interviewed her. And her story is, is so powerful. But ultimately, it's about finding strength to change yourself no matter what age or no matter what moment you are in life. And so she lost over 100 pounds and decided one day just to move. When I came up over that little berm of a hill, there were, I know it had to be 100 volunteers. Who 
who had waited for me and were cheering me in. And as I came over the finish line, Tony Williams, our chairman, our late chairman for the ADA, he, had, he announced my finish. And we got the picture of me and my coach riding behind me as we came over the finish line. I was so exhausted and tired, I really was not aware of my surroundings. But the next year in our, our leadership meeting, Tony said to me, Jean, did you realize what happened when you came over that finish line? And I said, well, I guess not, because I was so engrossed with myself and getting over the line that I, I wasn't aware of what was going on around me. He says, Jean, there were people weeping because you stuck to it. Everybody was finished in three hours. I took five. And he said, people were so moved by you finishing and being committed to that finishing. He said, it was just amazing. He said, I'm sorry you weren't aware of what was going on around you. Now the incredible thing and why I got into filmmaking and storytelling is that I was, oof, I was moved by Jean's story and I knew that complex dialogue of being an athlete, not thinking that you're worth enough, not worth being able to call yourself an athlete. And so when I heard her story, I was like, this is what other people need to hear and learn from. And so I sent her video out to TerraTrike, the company that she used to get in shape and to find joy and happiness from biking. And they ended up putting her on the site as an ambassador so more people hear her story. And that's what it's about. It's about sharing the stories of people that you meet along the way. And so they can come into your life. You are able to share their mission, share their story with others. And Annalise and I have had that privilege of touring around the US, speaking at REI locations to tell people why we ride, to tell people how we overcome our obstacles of managing chronic disease, of Annalisa overcoming grief, of losing her mother. And that's how, if you're able to take just a few of these tips, realize that you probably already have enough to start filming yourself, start filming others if you have a smartphone, to pick up a tripod and start learning these tips, start following the full Behind the Lens series so you are able to be the one traveling the world sharing your story and sharing the story of others as well. So with that, if you think there's an aspiring filmmaker in your life, share this video with them, encourage them to get out there and start actually doing it. That is the hardest part I will tell you. Make sure you leave a comment below, let me know what questions you have, send me your encouragement, like this video, subscribe and hit that bell. It makes a huge difference. So that, remember, you can go anywhere and do anything. Son Jake, he's got D1 lease. Um, he was diagnosed at five. And uh, yeah, that's how we... <laughs> he got me into riding, actually. I used to watch him ride his trike around in the backyard. And one yeah. day he said, I'm signing up for a ride, yeah. Dad. I'm Come raising $5,000 to go to Death yeah. Valley. And I said, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's do it.